Gear Pro Guide, and today we have our very first e-bike buying guide and review. Man, is it a good one. We've got QuietCat's Apex e-bike here, all terrain. So let's roll right into it. Apex bike's sole purpose is for rugged outdoors, and that's exactly what we've done today. So we've got the trailer one wheel with the Quiet Cat e-bike. We've got all our gear loaded down, including our inflatable uh, kayak by Nixie, coolers, fishing gear, fishing pole, and we made it out here on the soft sand, probably about a two, three mile trail to get to where we were. And now we're out here on the uh, intercoastal here in St. Augustine. We'll be out there taking some video, but too windy today so we figured we'd bring you back in here to where you can actually hear us so um, great e-bike uh, so far it's handled very well coming in through all the trails and the soft sand which we'll show you some video of that as well as we get into it but let's dive into some of the features and specs that you guys been waiting for frame size comes in small medium large we chose large i'm six foot two so i probably could have gone with a medium um, but they recommend over six foot for a large, so I chose the large, and I'm glad I did. It, it fits me well. Obviously, you can adjust the seat up and down to, to fit your needs, but the large frame size works well for over six foot. I can definitely balance it. Nice and comfortable. I can get my legs straight, you know, on the, when they're the furthest down on the pedal, uh, which is a nice smooth ride. This particular e-bike has pedal assist, so uh, meaning one through five. This Apex has one through five pedal assist, so obviously one would be the least amount of pedal assist as you're pedaling from the motor, all the way up to five, meaning full power on the motor, pedal assist while you're going. Um, and then it also has zero. Zero would be um, if you were going downhill or something, maybe you'd want zero, meaning the motor would not come on at all. So that way, if you are descending a hill or going through a rocky train, you wouldn't potentially have a safety hazard of when you go to pedal, the motor kicking on and flying you down the hill even faster. All right, so the first choice you gotta make when making a purchase like this is going to be the motor size. So we went with the 1,000 watt. Quiet Cat does have a 750 watt motor, uh, meaning it would be a class two e-bike. Uh, this is uh, an unrestricted e-bike because it is a 1,000 watt mid-drive motor, meaning it is not going, you're not gonna be restricted on your speed by the motor. You're only gonna be restricted by how fast you can physically go as a person. If you would have chose the 750 watt, you're in the class two e-bike classification and the motor would restrict you to 20, 21 miles an hour. All right, drivetrain. This particular Apex model has a nine speed SRAM drivetrain. What does that mean? It means it's got nine gears. So obviously whether if you're climbing a hill or descending a hill, you're gonna be in a lower gear. And if you're on a more flat terrain or, or mid terrain, you may you know, prefer the middle, the high gears. What that also means is that this is a mid drive with a drivetrain so if you want to max out the speed, you have to be in the highest gear, which in this case would be ninth gear, in order to get max speed out of the bike. All 
surprised. So this bike has a load capacity of 325 pounds. That's pretty good. So um, obviously we have, we've got the trailer today with you know a bunch of other gear packed down, which is separate from the 325 pound load capacity on the bike. But if you didn't have the trailer and you just had the bike, 325 pounds should fit you comfortably. And then you can also fit some gear back here on this little rack, you know, up to 100 pounds. So even if you don't have the trailer, um, you can still load some gear and go fishing, hunting, or whatever you need to do, or you can just go in the backcountry doing some exploring with no problem. All right, so brakes. When it comes to brakes, obviously they're super important for the safety of yourself and the bike. And we're in Florida, so obviously we got pretty flat terrain here, not many hills or not descending any, uh, any cliffs or anything. But if you were going to, brakes would be critical. And this particular bike comes with a four piston Tektra hydraulic brake system, um, which stops on a dock. Um, and we'll make sure we put that through some performance testing later that you can see as well. So this Apex bike comes with a 16 op 48 volt battery, meaning it gives it about 30 to 60 mile range, obviously depending on what you're hauling, what kind of uh, terrain you're on, and how much pedal assist or not pedal assist that you're giving it, or if you're in sport mode or eco mode. Um, but we'll make sure that we put that to the test later and show you guys the results to see if we can actually achieve that mile range. So the tires on this bad boy are a beast. You got 26 inch tires, four and a half inch wide, ideal for going through sand, snow, or any kind of rugged terrains that we have out here today. All right, so the big question, do I really need a premium $6,000 e-bike? And that's a good question. And obviously that's gonna be left up to you. So what this bike excels at is steep hills, rugged terrain, comes with premium components, awesome towing capabilities, well-built, solid frame. It's an unclassified bike because we got the 100, the, sorry, 1000 watt mid-drive motor and it has a walking feature, which we'll get into later. But the walking feature is, is a rather small feature, but um, to me, it actually comes in use in multiple uses. I use it to get the bike into my truck. I'll lift up the front tire, which I'll show you later, and use the walking feature to walk that front tire up onto the bed of my truck. And then also to get through this sand, um, or even these trails, if we're just walking our bike through, I'll use the walking feature, which allows the bike while you're walking beside it, you go about three miles an hour. Sometimes when you're even needing some softer sand, I'll even use the throttle because it allows it to go, it gives it a little more torque to get through the sand. So if you hunt, fish, camp, or even just like to explore the backcountry, I think it's a no-brainer. This is a badass bike and could be a good fit for it, but it also comes with a premium price. Um, cons or any gripes so far the really only gripe i have is this seat um, some people may love this style you know mountain bike seat uh, it's not super uncomfortable but for me i enjoy a wider seat more comfortable ride um, so this is probably going to be one of the first things i change up but other than that there's not much to, to gripe about with premium components nice display front suspension great towing capabilities. Even if you didn't have the trailer, you still have this rack back here for some of your gear. And then obviously, you know, some strong torque on this mid drive motor. All right, so we're out here on the trails again uh, with our Quiet Cat Apex. We don't have our trailer with us today, but um, just going for a little riding, test it out on some, some different terrain. Um, but this is definitely where I could see if I was a hunter. I'm not a hunter, I'm more of a fisherman. Um, or at least like to call myself that. Um, but I have plenty of family, friends who, who love to hunt. You know, this is, we're coming up on hunting season. Um, and I could definitely see where this, this bike would come into use. So, you know, they get back to their tree stands or their camps with their side-by-sides or, or four-wheelers, which as we all know, are, are super noisy. You know, they put off a scent, they're, you know, they're gas powered. So you're gonna have uh, much better luck or I should say uh, stealth getting back to your tree stand or your camp, you know, using this e-bike um, than you would with the four by four or side by side. So um, we're gonna start going on this trail a little bit just to show you a little bit 
as you would do as a hunter getting back to your to your tree stand um, easily easily can get up to 20 you know 25 30 miles an hour on this trail but we don't need to but we'll see what we can do Time to stop, we can stop on a dime. There we go. Hunting season is in effect. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, we came out here today and trekked on the uh, Guana State Park, probably about three miles out to the intercoastal, um, where we usually do most of our sups and kayak videos here for Gear Pro Guide. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope it was useful to you. And please check all the descriptions below for any more information you may need. Thank you. All right, so we've been out on the trails a couple times. You know, we took you out to Guana with the trailer, loaded down with all of our gear, went did some fishing, uh, handled well. Apex, quiet cat on the sand, even out there in, on the intercoastal soft sand, as well as the trails with the suspension and everything. But now what you've, what you've all most likely been waiting for, the performance testing. So as we've mentioned probably a hundred times, we're here in Florida, so it's not very hilly. Um, so we can't really do any hill tests, which I would love to do, you know, it's just to, to prove the torque in this motor. Um, but what we can do is obviously, you know, top speed using throttle only. Um, we can do a braking test and then also we'll make sure we get the proper range out of this, you know, battery that, you know, that QuietCat says you get, which is a, it's a pretty wide range, 30 to 60. And that's because, you know, it depends on how much pedal assist you're using, if you're on the train or if you're in... The, uh, on the asphalt and all kinds of other different you know circumstances so um, I'm confident you know we're at 22 miles right now and 40% battery life and I've, I've been giving this thing hell so we'll fully charge it we'll take it out you know just using throttle you know test it out that way to see you know what range we can get just so we, we're staying consistent and then uh, we'll do some brake testing here right now and then we'll also see what our top speed is so let's dive into it All right, so speed, you know, as usual, everybody wants to know how fast an e-bike can go. So as we mentioned, this bike, this uh, QuietCat Apex is a, a thousand watt mid-drive motor. So it is unrestricted as far as the speed. Um, it's not capped out 20 like a class two would be. Um, and also it's a mid-drive. So the gears do dictate, you know, the speed of the bike as well. So we're gonna start, you know, second and third gear and then get up to ninth gear and, and see how fast we can go. Um, we are on, you know, a developing street in my neighborhood. So there's, you know, minimal traffic, if not any, and uh, we're only gonna use throttle. So we're gonna start with the throttle and end with the throttle, no pedaling. So that way we can keep it consistent through all the, through all the other e-bikes as well with no other variables that could play a factor. Um, so let's get going. Uh, actually first, so it's a good point to mention. So these gears, so this is a mid drive and it does have gears um, and, and I'm guilty of it, but you really should not start from a dead stop, you know, in ninth gear, eighth gear, a high gear, um, because you'll do, you can do damage. You can do damage to your motor. You can do damage to your gears, your cogs. So uh, you really should get in the habit of, you know, whenever you go to slow down the downshift and then when you, when you get, you know start up you know you upshift to where you want where it's comfortable for you all right so let's see what we can do no pedaling second pedal assist we're gonna go to five three four five we got a cadence shifting here start shifting right now It. We're a 
ninth gear, 22 miles an hour, 24, 26, hopefully we don't run out any road, 29, and we hit 30, 30, Looks like it's gonna be about it. We're running out of road. All right, 30, almost 31 before we ran out of road here. I think 31 would have probably been about tops. So that's what we're getting for speed on this 1,000 watt Apex on the road. Obviously, not back on a trail. You know, it'd be a little different. Now let's check out some of the other performance reviews. All right, uh, braking. So braking is critical in, in all situations, you know, especially in a downhill situation. But in order to keep things consistent here with less variables, we are going to test this apex on an asphalt road going about 15 miles an hour. That, like I said, that way we can keep it consistent for our class two bikes as well that are capped out at 20. Um, so we're gonna get up 20 miles or 15 miles an hour. We've got some, you know, bean bags spread out five feet apart up here, and then we'll got some got the drone hovering above it as well. So we'll, you'll be able to see that, and that way we can we can see what kind of stopping power we've got on these Tektro uh, brakes on this Quiet Cat. So I mean, it's a premium bike with a premium price, so you would expect uh, some premium brakes, and so we're about to test that out. Let's go. Oh, a little over 15. Let's get to slow down a little bit. There we go. Right at about five foot for the front tire. Let's do it five more times and see what we got for an average. All right, so we did our brake test and I really honestly had no clue what to expect. So, um, you know, we it, it was a little hard to get, you know, right at 15 miles an hour. So I was usually between 14 and 16 when I started the stop. And it was about four to six foot is what our stopping range was over the five times we went. So not too bad. And again, I don't really have too much to compare that to, but we will in the future. But for now, the Quiet Cat Apex was stopping, you know, at 15, 14 to 16 miles an hour. Um, within four to six feet, you know, hitting both brakes, so not bad. And again, we were on asphalt, not back in the trails. Um, so let's keep it going. So it's time for the range test. Uh, last night, I fully charged the battery. As you can see, we're at 100%. I reset the trip count, so we're at a zero miles. And basically, I'm just going to ride around the neighborhood until battery dies and I have to start pedaling home so let's see how many miles we can get out of her I'm gonna it's gonna probably stay around you know pedal assist three just to keep it in the middle and then use mostly throttle and you know pedal every once in a while so let's get going Approaching, approaching five miles. This is going to take you know a lot longer than I expected. So, and it's starting to rain on us. So, 
we're gonna go back to the house and when it stops raining we'll get back out again and see how far we can go All right, so we hit 10 miles and 69% left of battery life, and we're gonna keep on going. All right, different day, a lot nicer out today than the other day when we were out, and we were at 24.9 miles, 25 miles at 37%. We'll keep on going. All right, so we've hit 35 miles, battery life at 22%. Let's see, at this, at this point it's looking like we should, we should get 40, 40 miles plus so let's see if we can get it so 46.8 miles so we, we blew right by 40 cruised past 45 and then when we got to under 10 percent battery life um you know it, the the speed has drastically decreased so the bike will only let me go about 15 miles an hour now that i'm under 10 percent. i'm guessing you know that way you know it saves and preserves enough juice for you to get back home so um, I think it's pretty safe to say that we, you know, we got two miles to get back to the house. We'll, we'll reach 48, so we're going to call it 48 miles, you know, to 50 miles range on this battery, which you know is pretty good. They call for 30 to 60, so um, we're basically right there in the middle of it, and we were we were on the road the entire time, but um, over you know a couple outings, you know, before the storm and then after the storm, we got back out here to try to drain it, so. A little bit of pedaling, mostly throttle, pedal assist 3, 4, and 5 throughout the entire trip. Uh, went into sport mode a couple times just, just for fun. Um, so that's it. Range test is done. 48, 50 miles on a full battery charge. Alright, so the performance testing is complete. We did uh, speed, braking, and range. I wish we could have done a couple more, like we said, uphill, downhill, but you know, here in Florida we don't have that opportunity really. Um, so speed, you know, we got up to about 30, a little over 30 miles an hour. Um, only throttle, no pedaling. Obviously, if we were pedaling, we could have, you know, 35, 40, you know, if we were, you know, giving a hell on the pedals. Um, and then braking, braking, we, we got up to 20 miles an hour and tried to stay consistent as we could on making sure that I was hitting the brakes um, over five different periods in the same spot at the same speed and we got about four to six foot feet of uh, stopping distance um and then range range you know quiet cat calls for 30 to 60 miles on a full charge we got um over a couple different outings because it actually takes a lot longer than i thought it would so to reach you know 40 plus miles so we, we we got 48 to 50 miles on the range which is nice that's good um we were using throttle most of the time and pedaling some of that time as well um and, but when we were on asphalt, we weren't, you know, back in the trails or where we were most likely going to be on this bike. So I would suspect, you know, if, obviously if you're towing some gear or hauling some gear and you're back in the trails, you'd probably get a little less, obviously, than that closer to that 30 to 40 mile range than what we did. Um, but overall, I was pretty good. So uh, we, we, were, we were happy with the results. So uh, I hope this video helped you out. I hope it helps you make a decision on whether to buy a, an all-terrain bike like this Quiet Cat Apex or another, um, maybe a full suspension you like instead. Uh, they have those as well. So uh, hopefully it helped you out and uh, we appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.